Okay, I'm on just so you can hear me. If anybody online, we had like 10 people at a time this morning. I was like, they must have all been east of the Mississippi, is all I can think. Because, or they got up really early. Well, Sarah Gracie, she's back here. Rich Roos, he's in Virginia, so they're all east coasters. Um, I don't know if there's any west coasters that were on there. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. Again, like I said, we're going to start on time. Now, everybody I hope had a chance to practice. You shared some things. You checked your sharing files. You uploaded some things. You converted things from Word to Google Docs. Hopefully, you'll, you, that worked for you. I know we had some issues with Google Voice. Um, Don, why don't you jump in and tell us what you discovered for people online. Come on, you just come over here. mean to cut you off there nope. uh, so we ran into a few things with up in a little more with the Google voice um, my good in the picture <laughs> okay uh, so we had a few folks that um, were not able to find a phone number locally and at the same time other people were able to find quite a few locally so uh, we had to give it a little bit of time log out log back in and we were able to find phone numbers so um, logging out, logging back in sometimes resets things. Google is kind of weird with stuff like that. The other issue that we ran into is we had somebody who has a Google Suite on their computer for uh, their work. And it was the state of Virginia. And he is he was using his state account to try to, to work within what we're doing here. Um, he was not able to access Google Voice and that is exactly what we run into with FireNet there's a security issue and that Google suite that's purchased for your place of employment likely does not have uh, Google Voice access so unless you have a at gmail.com address you're probably not going to be able to um, to use voice and so what we've done his his uh, work computer when he would log in with a Gmail it would revert back so he still couldn't access voice so we're currently downloading a second browser so we can work in both browsers and see if that works so if you have a, a G Suite of some sort on your computer through your employment that could potentially interfere with getting access to voice and a few other things so little hiccups but um, we're able to work through stuff so far good okay I just wanted you to know that there was some hiccups we found here and so those of you who are online and um, also, we found there are hiccups using Internet Explorer to access things instead of Chrome. So a couple of people here had to download Chrome in order to be able to use it, and it works much better, I'm presuming, for everybody who did that. Um, it, they really, it, it, it's, that's why I, when, when you, once you pick a platform, you know, stick with the platform. That's why I have all Android stuff, because I can, everything talks to each other, and I don't have any trouble with these kind of things. So talking about Facebook. So there's a couple things. What's Facebook good for? Now, Twitter, I, I sort of look at it like, you know, in the, in, in the old days we had newspaper, television, and radio. Well, Twitter is kind of like radio. It's quick, it's short, it's, it's immediate. Facebook is a little more like um, newspaper. It's longer. You get photos and information together. Um, you have room to post much longer posts in there. YouTube is like television. So um, Facebook has its purposes for, for that sort of thing. What it, what it, it does have some shortcomings, and that is that things drop off relatively rapidly. So it's, if, you, if you need um, information to stay, to remain, you will talk about using a blog. Like, for instance, you have a FEMA declaration. That information you want always available. Back here, you have a lot of arson issues. If there's an arson hotline, you always want that to be up. If you have, you're dealing with donations, like we were back here during the fires and all the donations, the blog lets you post donation information and keep it up instead of Facebook where it drops off the bottom. But nothing beats Facebook for engagement, talking to people, getting feedback from people. Um, blogs, there is a way to do it, but it's very odd. At the bottom of the blog, it says where you're supposed to comment, it'll say no comment with a pencil. And it looks like you shouldn't comment. What they mean is there aren't any comments. But it looks like no, like you can't, I don't know. I don't get nearly the engagement on there. And plus, it's not as phone friendly as Facebook. Everyone is used to using Facebook on their phone. And so sometimes when they've lost power at their house, they can still use Facebook because the cell towers are up. Um, sometimes the cell towers go down and then you don't have anything. But, you know. <coughs> um, 
you do have to have a Gmail before you even start. You have to sign up with a Gmail account. Um, I'm not positive, you know, you got one going anyway, but th that's why Gmail, the Google tools, is the first thing you set up when you get to an incident because you need it for everything else. To set up a blog or blog, to set up any of those things, you have to have a Google account. So set it up and you use that account, the, the work one, to log into it. Now, I don't have any issue, as I told people, with using my own accounts to access Fire accounts. When you, s when you, what you have for yourself on Facebook is called a personal page. It's not a community page, it's not an event page, it's not a government page, it's a personal profile. So your personal profile, you have to have a personal profile in order to be able to be added to a community page. And what we start on fires is either a community or government page, just pick whatever you, you know, um, whatever you want to. But when we start on a fire, it's a, it's a community or government page, it's not a personal profile. And the difference is, a personal profile, the only people who can see it are people that you friend and that you allow in to see your page. These kind of pages are open to the public. You don't have to have any kind of a Facebook account to go to these. Just like a restaurant or a theater or your hockey team or whatever, they have a Facebook page. It's not a personal, pr nobody has, they don't have to like or friend anybody. You can follow them, but they don't have any, they don't have to like you back. It's just, you can see, anybody can see it, okay? So you have to have a personal profile <coughs> in order to be added. For me to add you to the fire page, I take your personal profile and I add it to the page. Now, will anyone be able to see it? No. On the page, as an admin or an editor, when I can admin on a page, I, and if I have five of you added as editors, you can add things to the page. The only thing you, an editor can do is they can do everything on the page except change the layout, change the password, which you don't want them to do anyway. You just want them to be able to post things and upload and download things. So you, most people, you make them an editor. And as an editor, I can look at the page and I can see everyone who's posted and where I posted, it'll say Chris Erickson because it's using my personal profile to know who I am. But the only people who can see that are the people inside. It lets me as a lead know who's posted what. So if there's a problem with it, it doesn't, they don't all come up identical and I have to go, all right, who posted? No, the thing on here, the fourth one down, who posted? I know who posted it. It says published by Bob Smith. And I'm like, Bob, you got a typo in your thing and he can go back and edit it. Okay, so it shows your name on there on the, what we can see on the back end, but it doesn't show it publicly. I probably have 50 Facebook pages that were started using my personal profile and it's never once showed my name to anybody or my personal account. Here's the other thing. I also uh, manage the Nemo Facebook page. I mean, yeah, the Nemo Facebook page. And when I'm getting ready to post, when I click in the section, I'll scroll down a little bit. Um, I can't remember which of these I'm still in as admin, but let's see this. Uh, Sorry, it's catching up. You go to the place where you're going to post. I'm not in here as an admin anymore. That's why it's not letting me see. But they don't. So wherever you're going to, you're going to click in somewhere where you're going to post. And it will say, um, what I should do, I should just bring up the Nemo page. Nemo. Oh, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong spot. This is where I mean to go. I just want to show you what it comes up as. Okay, so this is our Facebook page, and on this page, you see, I see different things here. You see all of these things when you're, a, when you're an admin on a page. It looks different than it does when you're on a personal profile. So when you're an admin or an editor on a page, you see all kinds of things that no one else can see. So realize that. Okay, we come down. When I go to click in here, this is weird, it's not doing it now, normally, it brings up a, a notice when I do this that says, you are posting as um, as National Incident Management Organization. Actually, now that it occurs to me, is maybe not when I'm posting because it won't even let me post. It, they don't have to tell you that because I can't even post unless I'm an editor or an admin. I can't even see it. But if I was to go down and somebody made a comment and I wanted to comment, I believe it's in, is it, no, it's not doing it. It does it every time except when I'm trying to show it to you. That's... <coughs> that's what I was doing. I was, so if there's a, oh, see, these are all shares, not comments. I'm trying to find s some comment here somewhere. Shares. I don't have any comments in here. Arg. Uh, let's see. Okay, so if I wanted to reply down here to Sally's comment, let me go down a little further. 
And let's see, there's one reply. There I replied as myself because I was I'm I'm added to this page as myself and that's that's I'm not an admin, I'm just a Okay, so um well, anyway, most of the time, I don't know why it's not doing it, most of the time it says you are replying as National Incident Management Organization, so you know what you're replying as, right? It, it, it's, I have never, in all the years I've used this, since 84, no, that's somebody else, he's posting something. It could be. In this particular case, you could, you'd see a different, you, sometimes you see a different picture. Um, right now, I know, because this picture right here, the one that we, that we that's what comes up when you're, when you're posting as a as as that page, if I'm posting as myself, it'll be my personal picture. Okay, so I I just I mean I know that there have been times I know Kathy had problems with, and you you can create a a per it has to be a personal profile. So you create a fake personal profile, like my regular Facebook is under Chris Erickson. Maybe I create one that says K Erickson. And I don't put anything on that page. It's just a personal profile that shows nothing. Or maybe you create one for National Forests in North Carolina, but it's a personal page. It can't be a, a, a forest page or anything, any official organization or anything like that. It has to be a personal profile. And then you use that to log in. My problem with that is now I'm juggling seven accounts. I got so many I have to log into. So for me, it's never been a problem, and I've never posted incorrectly, and I don't pay all that much attention, and I've never posted incorrectly on a page. So it's up to you, but your Gmail account and your Facebook account, they don't show. They don't show to anyone else except to the, you know, but you got to go with, if it's, if it's your home unit that you're working with, you know, whatever they want you to do, you go with that. But on a fire, you just ask them what they want you to do, but I wouldn't worry about it. Because it's, like I said, it's it's rare that it happens that you post as the wrong person. You just have to pay attention. You know, if I open the Nemo page and I'm an admin, it's going to post, I'm going to be posting as Nemo. Okay? So, yes. Oh, that's add yourself to a team. To, this is, um, it, it, they now have a new thing where they have teams on Facebook, which I haven't used yet. So I'm sure that, th that's the thing about social media tools. It's almost, imp we couldn't, we couldn't can a class that gets offered all the time because it changes, like it, nonstop, it changes. It, and I'll, I'll log in and something was somewhere and then I log in the next day and it's not there anymore because they've changed how it is. So you really have to keep up with the tool. You have to go look at it and try things. And I haven't tried this, but they have this add yourself to a team. This says support your page and build trust with your audience, Nemo, by letting them see who's on your team. Maybe maybe that's what, you, let me see what it does when I click it. Okay, when you add yourself as a team member, this page will appear on your profile. That means this Nemo page will appear on my personal profile. Your name and profile picture will be shown on this page. Okay, don't do that. That's, you know, if you have a nonprofit and you want everybody to know who the leadership of the nonprofit is or something like that, you know, you could, you could add it so they all know there's more accountability for who you are. But in this particular case, that's not something that we, that we would normally do. Okay, um... So you're building a community or an ev or or an uh, not an event usually, but a community or a government page are the most common things to build when you get to a fire. I'll show you some of the ones. Um, uh, well, let me show you in here the way you add admins or editors. And I said I think the good idea is to add people as an editor. And the reason is, what if somebody goes crazy and you know it's a tough being in fire camp, right? Somebody goes crazy. <laughs> They're tired of the food. They've had it. And they decide to go in and change all your passwords, and now nobody can access your own account. It happens all the time to people. So if you add them as only as an editor, now here it is, under settings, okay, up here under settings, you go down here to something called, now I have to find it, see, they keep, ah, page rolls, right here, okay? So you go over to page rolls there on the left, when I open that, it shows me assign a new page role. And it also tells me who's already added. Look at all these people who could be adding to our page. And I didn't even know that. I probably did know that, but I forgot. So 
and they're all admins because this is a page Nemo owns jointly with everyone. I don't own it, you know, so if somebody else wants to change it, it doesn't matter. But assign a new page role. If I want to put somebody in here, I can type in their Gmail account. You might be able to, I don't know if you can do it with a FireNet account. This is if relatively new to us in working it in with all of these things, um, whether you can or not, but a Gmail account. And here it says you're an editor. Right here you assign the role. So if you want them to be an editor, that's great. If you want to be an admin, a moderator, an analyst, I've never used all these uh, bottom things. A moderator, I assume, I don't know what they can do. But the only one you use. No, I add people as admins. Because it's usually usually because as the lead, I don't I, I want to be an admin because I want to make sure I have access, but I usually have assigned someone else, my deputy takes care of running the day-to-day -day operation and I make her an admin and then she adds all the editors and people like that. Now, as my understanding, and if somebody out there knows better than this, I, you know, I know a lot about the tools. I don't know everything about the tools because I have people that take care of this for me. So sometimes I lose track of some of the tiny tools. But in my last iteration here, I, uh, I found that an editor, an admin can get rid of an editor, but an editor can only get rid of themselves. Like, I couldn't go in and take you off as an editor, but you can take yourself off as an editor. So, th but an admin can take off anybody. Okay, so if you're on as an editor and you leave the fire, go back into the page, go to settings, go to roles, and take yourself off. If you don't want to, because you, you get all the stuff from the page if you're on as an editor or an admin. Okay? All right, so that's how you put in admins and members. Okay, so now... Um, let's look at a couple of pages. This is a page from, um, a yo, I'm sorry. Yes. So, uh, question from online. I seem to remember that you had to be friends with somebody to add them as an admin editor to a Facebook page. Is that still true or can you just add them by typing their email? You know, that's a good question. It used to be that a person, like if I wanted to add, uh, Dawn to my Facebook page, she had to go like it first. She just had to like the page. I'd say, go in and like the page so I can add you. I'm not sure if that's still true, but it's probably good for Dawn to like the page anyway. So go in and add it. So if, if for some reason you add them as by, either by their email and they can't and they don't get the invitation you've been listed as an admin, just make sure they go like the page. And there for a while, that wasn't, we were having to add the person as a friend, like their personal page as a know. friend. And apparently that is not no, you have to add their personal profile for them to be an editor and admin, right. but n and and you have to add their personal profile unless they've created this fake profile I told you about, which becomes a nightmare of trying to manage accounts and know which one you're in. But just add their personal profile, and then they can be an admin or an editor. So then a couple of things on that note that we've run into. Um, we've had people show up, and not only do they not know what their Facebook password is, but they don't know what their picture is either because they never use Facebook, and you literally can't find people. If the settings are locked down, you can't find them. So those are things to think about. If you have your, your profile pretty locked down, we may not be able to find you in that search function. So you might have to change your settings a little bit. Um, the other thing that we run into is when we send somebody uh, an invitation to the page to be an editor, they have to accept it. Uh, and they have, they're not able to find it in their alerts. And so do you know how to go to the groups and see all the, the requests that you've gotten? Okay, so this was a little trick we had to figure out last year, but we have to go, going to go to your home, is that all right? So um, right here on the left, it says pages. And so when you're managing a page, this little orange flag is what the logo is for pages. So you're going to see that on the pages app for your phone, and then you're going to see it here. So if you go to pages, it's going to show what pages Chris is on. But it's also going to say invites. So you have 20 plus invites there. So you go to invites and you'll see that invitation there for you to manage that page. So if somebody's added you and you don't see the alert, go to pages and go to your invite and you'll see it there. Um, we had trouble last year with a lot of people losing that uh, notification. So that's where to find those. That's great information. I just know because people tell me I just invited you and then I go get it and I go and I haven't I I don't use some of these. There were times where we had PIOs come in and they were out in the field and as we were trying to assign everybody we'd go ahead and try to add them so they were out of cell service and they'd come back in at the end of the day and then 
it was completely fouled up. So um, we somehow figured that one out after a lot of hours. Okay, so we have um, on my team some protocols. I'm going to share a little of these with you. For people who are online, this protocol sheet is in the folder under student resources. Okay, so I'm going to show it on here, but if you want to follow along or if you want to look at it later, it's, um, it's in there. So we have protocols about how we want things posted. So in this case, I'm going to make this bigger, so it's, I think I can make it bigger under view. Um, I'll make it like 200. So those of us who are old and blind can see it. Okay, we have an order. Now this is this has got protocols for everything. It goes up here, fire to what we do with Maps, what we do with Gmail, Google Drive. It has all these protocols for what we want to do. In regard to Facebook, it's the second thing that we post to. Use the JPEGs already on your computer, upload them. Then we have, a, a, and why I say a protocol, this is how we like it done on my team. This doesn't make it right for every team. We want you to make a custom tiny URL for each PDF map and put it under the photo. If you put a photo on Facebook, we, we need to have a, and you put a map. Now the reason that we do that with maps on Facebook and on, um, on um, Twitter is because what happens when you put a JPEG on, just a JPEG on Facebook? Do you know what happens to the user? What do they see? What can they not do with it? If they blow it up, it turns into a mushy, fuzzy mess. You can only blow a JPEG, and, 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 and Facebook compresses these photos so they're of the map, so they're small. And so when they try to blow them up, it just turns into a fuzzy mess. And people are rabid about their maps. Seriously, they get very upset when they don't have, you know, the latest map and they can't see. And they zoom in because they know that land. They zoom into the smallest detail down the bottom of the ridge over the thing. My house is right here. You know, they know those maps and they know that country really well. A PDF lets you, you can make a PDF as big as you want. So we always have a PDF. Now, remember what I told you. If somebody wants to share it with people who don't have Facebook, you can hit share and share it to all your Facebook friends. That's fine. But what about your grandmother who wants the map? You gotta have something to download and email her the old fashioned way. So you have a PDF. We always have a PDF with every map. We also have a PDF of the update on Facebook. There's always a PDF. And there is always the words above it that says, in fact, we put that in here. Here's the verbiage. Oops, let me find the arg. Now I'm frozen. Nope, it just froze for a moment. Um, see, now we didn't. Uh, we don't have it here. This verbiage, what we put under a JPEG, like a map or the update, for a downloadable, emailable, printable PDF of this map. Click here, and that's where the PDF goes. Now, why do you think we put all these this in there? Why do we put all the words in there? Yes, but there's another reason. What is the point of social media? We want you to take this information and give it to other people. So we're putting it in a form you can and we're reminding you. <laughs> we'd like you to email this, download it, print it, put it up in your store, whatever you got to do. So if we put some verbiage like this for a downloadable, emailable, printable PDF of this map or this update or today's update, click here. It's reminding people that the whole point of this is to share the information. We want you to take it and share it somewhere. So we put that, we could just say, you know, we could just put the link, tiny URL, but that doesn't get us toward our goal, which is to spread the word, timely and accurate information, and get it to as many people as possible and leverage our audience to do it, right? So that we aren't, po it's not just us sending it out. We want our audience to do it for us. So we have... <coughs> We have protocols here on all of these, what we want you to do, what we want it to look like. We want the verbiage that goes above the map. This is the 9-5 briefing map for the hashtag Broadway Fire. You're always establishing hashtags or using hashtags that have been established, depending on when you get there, because it will go over that in Twitter, but it helps people search for that kind of thing. So instead of just typing Broadway Fire and Wyoming here, whatever ones we were using there, um, it doesn't matter where you are, you just put you put these in. Instead of just having Broadway Fire, we just make it a hashtag. You can still read it. Otherwise, you have to go to the bottom and add all the hashtags. 
I just put it in the text. I just make it say hashtag Broadway Fire, hashtag Wyoming. It might be hashtag Wyoming weather if it's a weather story. There's all kinds of hashtags you're using for different things. But use your current, um, your, your hashtags that are good for your particular incident. Um, again, we have the same for a downloadable, emailable, printable PDF of this map. Click here. The public information map. This is what it should say. These are protocols for what we do on my team. This is what I want you. That's just my team. I mean, they're not uh, totally dissimilar, I wouldn't think, are they? It's just a verb. It's just whether kind of maybe what words you use, or maybe they might, they might not ha have this written down. I have it written down because it's really nice when someone comes in. I can just hand it to them and say, you're going to be working in social media. Here are the protocols for posting. And it's written down. And we do it the same way. We do it pretty much the same way every time. Okay, so we did the why you always link to the PDF. I'm going to close this down. We always do a day of photo. We have a folder of the daily photo. And inside, now this, I can't tell you how important this is. Inside the daily photo map, we put the two photos that are for use today. But we can't just keep adding photos in there or what will happen? Now I've got 14 photos in there. I don't know which ones are for what day. Always have dated folders. You can add as many layers and sublayers of folders as you need to in Google Drive. You make a folder that says daily photos and it is, what's today, the 16th? It says 416. The next one says 417. The next one says 418. Make a folder for two photos. It's okay. It's only a click of your mouse. Just make a folder. Otherwise, it's just a mass of photos and nobody remembers, especially that remote PIO who maybe they get a request. I'm in town walking around and I there's a media person there who says, oh, you know, we're going to run the story, but we didn't have any photos. Guess what? I can access it on my phone. I know what today's photos are and I can send them off to you without a problem. Okay? Because you got you just... It's better, you know, you're either a lumper or a splitter. <laughs> I'm sort of both. I, I, I'm, I need to lump them into usable. Same with maps. You end up with JPEGs, PDFs, and sometimes PNGs of maps. And there are so many of them, and they all look the same, especially at some point of the fire when it's not growing that much, you know. They all look the same. Put them into the folder by day. Make a folder <laughs> that says the day so that everyone can go to the, has the right maps for the right day because you don't want to post. Get an IR map. You get a PIO map. You get an operations map. You, get, you, know, you have all these maps, and you have varying versions of each of them. Put them in a folder. Um, let me look at a couple of these. This is, this is Carlton Complex. Now, you'll notice here on the top left corner this official fire information logo. I have to confess to this. A friend of mine and I made this up years ago and just put it out there, and now everybody's using it. But it, it was really just I needed. We needed something because because agencies could not use their own logo. You couldn't use your park service or your forest service logo on a fire. Partly because the agency didn't want you to, but also partly because you're an interagency group on the team. You know, there's all kinds of cooperators. So we needed a generic official logo that we could use. That would, that would show this was the official page. Now, people have asked me, well, can't someone just steal that from your page? Yes. Have I ever had it happen? No. In all the years I've been doing this, I've never had anybody steal it. Did someone steal yours? Are you about to say someone stole your logo? <laughs> no, nobody stole it, except we stole it from you. Um, <laughs> no, no, we shared it. But, but this, that logo, for our team, we're not going to go anywhere and not use that logo as our main thing. That's what the public is accustomed to seeing now. And so when they're going to look up a page, if they see that, they know that that's the official fire information. So for us, and I think I can probably speak for the majority of the teams, we're not going to use anything other than that in the, the profile picture. And the nice thing is you can then take that logo. What we started doing was we take that logo and we put it on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and we put it on the bulletin board because now there's a connect between what you see in town and what you see online. This is the official information. And you need to be established as the official information because there's a lot of other people out there. So it was very useful. We just, I came up with a general idea. I said, oh, I wanted to have this and fire information has to say official. And then my friend who's a graphic designer, she fixed it. And then we just started using it. And then we made it. We, there was no committee that approved it. Nobody said this is good, bad. We just did it. So it's everywhere now. So, but, and it's in your folder, that folder that you have on Drive. That logo is in there. So you have it. Um, one thing I want to tell you is it's, it's interesting, but the, um, the first, I'm going to have to go to my, or the Nemo Facebook page again. I should have left it up here. Um, oops, I keep, I keep uh, going there instead of here to search for it. 
I want to show you that the, f the first logo that you post is the one that, sh uh, not logo, um, the first uh, URL that you post is the one that uh, shows. So what that means is if you have a link in your update, usually when you post an update, you, you take it out of Word, you copy all the text, and you dump that into Facebook. So it's in the body of your Facebook post. Then you attach the PDF of the same thing. Okay, So in the body of your post, I'll go down to here. In the body of your post, you dump the, the copy from your Word document or whatever you got it from, and you format it, get it so that it looks right. But what's interesting is the first, if I open this, you'll see that the first um, link that's in here is right here. The Oh, that's right. I did it the other way. This, this, is, this is a good explanation, though. You see how I have two links in here. I have this one, and I have this one. This one, the agenda, is the one that's showing. Normally, the first link that comes in your, in your press release is what will display below. Okay, so if there's something you want to display below, like the daily update or the picture of the day, and it's linked to your Facebook page, and you, you know, I mean, picture you'd probably just upload, but if you wanted your update, you'd make sure that logo goes in first. The first link, sorry, I keep saying logo, the first link is the one that shows at the bottom of your post. Does that make sense? So this right now, this is showing, this is the bottom of the post, and it's showing this agenda. But that's because... I can change what's what's in here. There's a little X. You can't see it very well, but right up here, there's a little X that lets me close out of the document. I can close what's this. I can close what's showing there if I don't want it to show. Okay, so if something pops up and you go, oh, I forgot. That's the first one in the thing, and I don't want that to show. You can just close it and post nothing or uh, upload your photo. Okay. Um, now, a, a quick discussion which we will repeat in future days. Why do we have incident-specific, well, there it is, it's right there, um, Facebook pages? Well, I take it back. Why, why do you think I support having incident-specific Facebook pages? <laughs> here's the reason. It's easier for the public to find. That's the main reason. And here's the deal. If you're on... A large forest, like say the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest, which runs from the Canadian border all the way to the bottom of Washington, it's huge. They have tons of fires all summer long. If you live up in the Meadow Valley near Canada, and there's a fire up there, but there's all these other fires, if you, if all we have is the Okanagan, I keep pointing at you like you're still there, oh, if all you have is the Okanagan Wenatchee Facebook page, and they're posting stuff about fire, are you going to get just about the fire that you want to know about? No, you're going to get everything that's on, going on on the Okanagan Wenatchee, everything. And if you follow the Twitter account, that's the Okawen Twitter account, are you going to get just what's happening on the fire up in the Methow Valley? No. You're going to get everything on every fire. And the problem is when you're in a community and you're a, a person worried about what's happening in your community and you're worried about the fire in your community, all you want to know about is the fire in your community. And the only way we can do that is to give you incident-specific pages. So we start incident-specific pages. Now, uh, and, uh, and another reason that I've done it, uh, for instance, Yellowstone. Um, when we were in Yellowstone, they said, well, we have a Yellowstone page. And they did. And it had like, I don't know, 300,000 followers. I mean, it had, it had a huge audience. They said, well, we'll just, you, you just use our page. And I said, you don't want me to use your page because I will blow it up. It's going to be all me, all day, all the time. And the people who follow the Yellowstone page are, are the Bugs and Bunny people, right? They, they want to see the wolves in the back of the park. They want to see the geysers. They want to see... They don't, they don't even live here. They live in Japan or Australia or somewhere. They're following it because, like, you follow Yosemite and you follow Yellowstone. These are lovers of the area. They're not there needing detailed fire information. So, same with, uh, like, um, the Kenai Peninsula Borough in Alaska, where I live. Um, if we use the borough Facebook page and the borough is still trying to do borough business... Sorry, all me, all the time, all day. Because we dump a lot of information on those pages. So if I'm posting it, your stuff about your your assembly meeting tonight is going to get buried. I mean, it, no one's going to see it. So the way around that is you is what we suggest is we'll start a page, and then you go, and I'm sure you've seen this in here. Um, let me try doing it on this page. Because you have to be an admin or an editor to do this. Is once I post something, I write something, 
I can, um, where is it now? <sighs> Sorry. Um, I can pin this. I'm trying to figure, I, now I can't remember where it is. Is it right here? Nah, 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 nah. Hang on. I can pin it to the top of the page. I can make it an announcement as well. I can't, it's, it's, I'm not finding it. Um, oh, that's right. I have to post it first. I don't want to post it. Maybe it's in this one. Okay. If this one, if I wanted to, here it is. I can pin this. You have to post it first. So if I want this page, I just click these buttons and it gets me pinned to the top of the page. So what we do is we create a message that says on the Yellowstone page for information about fires in Yellowstone, click here. And it's a link that takes them to our Facebook page. So now I'm leveraging the Yellowstone audience but only the ones who want to see the fire. And once they get over to our page, they're going to like that page. Okay, so you can, same with the borough. We would say, if you want information on the, the Card Street fire um, in the Kenai Peninsula borough, click this link. That way the borough goes on and does their stuff, you know, on their page. And we're, stru we're still leveraging their audience. We still, we're still talking to those 300,000 people, but we're pulling over the ones that have an interest in our page without interrupting their daily business. That's, a, that's, a, that's the best reason, one of the best reasons for why you do incident-specific pages. There's some reasons on Twitter, too, which we can cover when we... Yes. then grows onto my forest and I don't have an instance specific page that I can share with the public. If I have to share that forest page, that is going to be worthless to all of the people in North Carolina because they're going to see all your other business. They're not just going to see the fire. And that's what I want to be able to share with them is the fire. Even if it's just smoke from your fire coming up to North Carolina, if I can't point them to a specific incident that they can follow to get more information about where that smoke is coming from, You've just totally made my job so much more difficult. So this is your job as a PIO when you get to those fires to convince people like me that you know what you're doing. It's, it's true. It's it's true. I, and you know, although I will say, I still run into um, <coughs> public affairs people who say, "No, no, we don't want you to send people there. We want them to come to our page because we're trying to build our audience." I spend a lot of time, not with Kathy, but with everybody trying to tell you why you do not want me to do this. And I don't want to start posting. I don't want to like do it for a while and show you how bad it's going to be because then my audience is going there. I, I want to have one, do it now, get it done, and drive everyone to that audience, to that page. Um, I'll add to this because this is also kind of a passion of mine. Um, it's When you have a fire that's growing, uh, one that's affecting multiple counties, you have evacuations in multiple counties, you have closures in counties, you have closures in national forest or BLM. When you're trying, when those, those folks are trying to get information to their residents of their county, the residents or users for that specific group, if you're, if you're bringing it in from one page, so for instance, uh, county A is given all the information out, will the people in county B think that their county is not talking to them at all? Or if they, the Forest Service visitors, if their Forest Service isn't using, um, or if the Forest Service is relying on the one county to put information out of their page, people don't think that information is actually come from, coming from the Forest Service. So when you have different agencies involved with different information, it's important to be able to let those people have your voice and you continue with the fire on that main page. And you can bring those cooperators' information funneled into the fire page but I'll tell you, there's nothing that um, frustrates residents more than a county not speaking because it's not on their own page or we're not sending people to that, that county's page. So keeping the entities separate and then you have your fire page for the main fire information is super important. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that leads me, there's a couple of things I want to mention, but that leads me to the power of community pages and how you can leverage community pages with your page. Um, things to consider. I, I don't use, you know, Deliver It is a, is a program that lets you auto-post. You can auto-post some things. 
Auto posting doesn't work great because it's a double click. You know, it, it'll all it does is post another link. Like if I want to do auto post from Twitter onto Facebook, it'll come in as a as a clickable link on Facebook. It won't it won't put in the whole tweet like you would like it to. It just brings in a link. Now I have to click again and go to another place. And you're trying to reduce the number of clicks. So I don't use auto post unless by myself and I'm buried in work for a while until I get some help, then I might, I might use it, but not all the time. I was going to show you how to find a, uh, I will show you how to find a URL. There's a way to find a URL of like a video, the original URL of something on Facebook. Um, uh, let's see, but I, I do want to notice on this one, you'll notice it, and teams are different this way. Some teams continue to drive people to InciWeb and that is the agency protocol is to drive people to InciWeb. I, and this is what this is doing. They don't have a PDF. We'll see this. This is a different fire from mine. They don't have a protocol about, about having a PDF with the map. So this map, if you were to blow it up as a JPEG, it's going to get all fuzzy. But they're linking you to the map on InciWeb. So you can go click here and get the map, I believe, in PDF form from InciWeb, um, rather than having it on your page. Uh, I don't always drive people to InciWeb because I, I find it's, it's difficult to update. It's like trying to keep a web page updated. There's a lot of stuff you have to go through to do it. Sometimes it's frequently down, but it's frequently up too. I mean, it works, it, it works fine. It's a great tool. But it's not as easy. I can't post to it from my phone, whereas everything else I have, I can update and do on my phone. And sometimes things are moving very quickly. So some, some leads on Teams and some teams want to use all your social media to drive people to InciWeb, and some people use InciWeb to drive people to your social media. So go with whatever your team wants to do. We always post to InciWeb. But it's kind of like the email. For us, it gets updated once a day with, uh, with the update and photos. We make sure there are photos and updates and maps. And then all the, all the quick change information goes on social media. So it, it depends on the team. It depends what they, what they you know, want to do. Um, you can see in a lot of these, these are just fire pages. The way, the, the way it works is first it shows all your photos, then it shows all your videos, then it starts to show your your updates. Um, I was going to show you on this video, if I open this video and I pause it, um, or maybe I have to do it on the main page. It's a, it's kind of a convoluted way to find a video. I'm trying to find a video where it's actually posted. You have to find it where it's in an actual post, not under the videos. Um, let me see if I can. The other thing is that this page was one that we started for a fire on the Olympic National Forest, but then they changed it. Um, I can't find it. Let me see. Uh, so you have to. Where are you looking? No, I'm not an admin on here. See, you don't see any. I can't. See the insights or the settings or everything else. Every page comes with that link on the bottom. So if you want to create a page, you can. Okay. Anybody can. It just makes it easier for you to find how to create a page. Um, I'll try to. I'll see if I can find it a little bit later to find how to. Um, I just want to show you a couple of these. Um, wh one of the important things for me, another protocol on our team, is we always take this as an opportunity to educate. Um, I instead of posting, you've heard of infrared. You know, get an infrared flight for mapping, and we have an infrared map. Well, if you're going to post the infrared map, you don't just want to say, here's the infrared map. Every post is an opportunity, just like every interview with the media is an opportunity to educate the public. So our posts always go with something like an infrared flight is taken every day from this time to this time, and this is how, w this is the kind of plane that uses infrared technology where it detects heat. And it shows us where there is still heat on the fire. The large dots mean this, or the hashtags, or the little dots mean this, or the cross marks mean less heat, and the dots mean more intense heat, the brighter the red area, whatever you're going to explain about your map. So it's an opportunity to educate. We, don't, we try not to just post a photo. If it's a photo of, you know, a great photo of a pumpkin and a crew, we explain what a pumpkin is. A pumpkin is where we hold water. The water is used to dip out of or fill trucks or do whatever. And you'll see these scattered in various places around the fire because when there aren't water sources nearby, they fill out of these areas. They're often filled by helicopters. These, the, the public is fascinated. That they become very routine to us. 
but the public is fascinated with these details of how we do this, how we fight fire. So it's a great, it's just make sure you take every opportunity to provide, uh, you know, information. This one says, um, yes. Every time. Every time we post. Yes. Explain what it is. Exactly. I don't know that who saw yesterday's is the one seeing today's. And if they don't want to read it, they won't. They'll say, oh, an IR map, and they'll click on it. But every every day, every post. We, oh, the question was, do we, sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, do, we, do we continue to put that information about what an IR map is, the educational piece, on something like an IR map or any other post, do we put it, if we do an IR map every day, do we explain it every day? And the answer is yes. We re-educate every single day because the audience can be different. You might word it a little differently. Maybe maybe one day you put in a little extra information about something that you didn't have before. Or IR, maybe l yesterday you just put what the IR map was. Today you put, here's what the IR map is. And by the way, these only fly really from 9 o'clock at night until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning because they need the darkness. And, you know, there's only one or two IR ships in the whole country and they don't get to every map. So if we don't have a new map, it's because they didn't do an IR flight. You know, we don't have any any real way to get an, a map, a new map, unless we have ours. So I have little bits of information that are different that we feed in every time we do it. You know a lot of stuff about it. Use it and use that to educate the public. And that's true of ev everything we do. If you have a photo, whatever it might be. So in here, di they did it here. Um, they said uh, Hama Hama Road in Tolina Lake will be closed today. Level 3 evacuation notice for this area will be available soon. This means leave now. They're taking the opportunity of post. Don't just say it's going to be evacuation notice for today. Take some time to explain. You might even put a link in right now. Um, it says, don't wait, pack your stuff, leave the area. I don't know where this link goes. It might go to this. This is the problem with not having an identified link. But, Or does this go to the sheriff's department? Because often evacuations are always done by law enforcement. I mean, the fire advises, but law enforcement does it. Maybe, and usually the sheriff has a Facebook page or something where you can direct people for evacuation information. I, I have to, little side tangent, totally advise you, don't get in the evacuation business. If you... <laughs> Trying to keep up with what's going on at an OEM or a sheriff's office if they're evacuating people, rather than you getting the information from them by phone, going, "Did you evacuate? Are we in this level?" Talking to your ops guy, you get to, and you write a post yourself. Just link to the people who are doing it. Just <laughs> so it comes from one source. If you don't own that information and you don't own evacuation information, just link to the sheriff's department. And if they, if you hear something news happening, put a post and says, "You know, if you want to know anything about evacuation information, the only thing I will post about evacuations is." If we have the the um, the level the level evacuation level poster that somebody has the artwork that says this is what the different levels mean, I'll post that because that's a fact. It it it's just on its own. It never changes. But the evacuation information itself on your Facebook page or anywhere else, just pr provide a link to their Facebook page and let them answer the questions. Otherwise, you'll get yourself in a knot pretty quick. So here, now this, see, I wouldn't, Maple Fire page and update, maybe maybe you would do that, but it depends what's in it. Maybe there's something you need to explain. But remember, it's kind of like we always tell people with the media, you have the floor. Use it for something beneficial. Use it to educate people. You know, today's going to be a hot day. Expect it's going to be, you're going to see more improved, increased fire behavior today because it's a hot, windy day, and that's going to make the fire uh, move. So stay tuned. Check back to our page. It's not in your press release like that, but it's a good little thing to get people's attention. You know, pay attention. It's going to be one of those days. Okay? This is one on the Olympic. Um, this is the sawmill fire. You see they're all using the same logo. Pictures. People love pictures of camp. The scout pack taking a camp tour. The kids squirting a hose. That's all good stuff. People love those. Especially then the parents all come to your page. They want to see their kids on the... Um, but I, I should I should um, make a recommendation that you not be careful when you take pictures of kids, <laughs> and you're going to post them on your Facebook page, especially if they come with a teacher. You need to get permission slips for you need, the, and I I believe the child can uh, the teacher can sign if they're taking a class group, or we check with them ahead of time if you know they're coming, and we have that we send the teacher this thing and say please send them these home with their parents because we're going to take pictures of them when they're here. 
and we want to post them. You have to be careful, especially with kids. I mean, it, with anybody, but especially with kids. Um, pictures of, you know, sharing with students. Now, notice this one is the backs of all students. So you're good with that. Okay. Progression maps. Now, here's the educational piece. They could have just said progression map of the sawmill fire because that's what it is. I would put as of what date, but um, then it, 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 it ranges from when to when is when the, but then it says the colors on the map indicate the growth of the fire each day since the fire started on April 23rd. You know, see the legend below. It tells you which page. Use the opportunity to educate. Okay, and let's see. Here is the borough fire. You can change this picture every day if you want to. You can change it all the time. I, I, I recommend not using the circular choice for this picture because it chops off the logo. It's better when it's square, but some, some people choose that one. Um, <clears throat> these are all just fire pages. Now, you can choose to have um, people um, post on your page or not post on your page. Here's a couple things I would never do. Don't restrict commenting. Don't, um, what do you call it? Don't monitor. Is it monitor? It's called something. I'm, I'm losing the word. Where you, where you, the comments come to you first. Oh, approve. Well, it's not approve. It's called something like monitor. But don't do that because if somebody posts something and it doesn't show up right away, they know what you're doing. And the backlash will be worse than anything they can say because they're going to figure that you're editing all the bad comments out and only putting the good ones on there, even if you're not. But if you're not doing that, then why are you monitoring in the first place? Unless, I guess, if you have a troll of some kind, you know, you, you have issues. But <clears throat> um, but there are better ways to handle that sort of thing than, than <coughs> excuse me, than doing that. I'm going to need to get my drink of water. So um, be careful about that, about, um, uh, about not monitoring. And the other thing is... Um, uh, be care very, very careful about deleting. Um, I talked to an attorney who was a tort attorney, and he said, I said on his federal page we had a problem and we were going to delete the commenter, and he said, be very careful about what you delete. And I said, why is that? He said, you're a federal government page. Freedom of speech trumps everything. Everything. He goes, I don't care if he comes on your, on your page and writes the F word a hundred times. And you're like, oh my gosh, this, this is not a cool. No matter. Freedom of speech says that's what we fought for. for you, you can say what you want to say. But there's a couple things to remember. One, he said the way to deal with it is <clears throat> you can put a post at the, at the top, um, a part of your post at the top that says comments made on this post that are not germane to the conversation will be deleted. Then you can delete them. And we did on the Daniel Laird Memorial. We had um, <coughs> somebody just saying some horrible things on a memorial page. And, you know, the family was going to see this. And so we went back in, posted comments that are not germane to the memorial. Uh, comments, you know, on this post about the memorial will be deleted, and then we deleted them. Because those kind of people are the people who will sue you for freedom of, thank you, for, um, for freedom of speech issues. So you have to be very careful about doing that. And by the same token, don't block them. I didn't block anyone. And he's had some comments on the page that were, they weren't really appropriate, but they weren't wrong. We left those up. You don't want to be accused of deleting everything a whole per Like if you block a whole person, you have to be very careful about, about doing that. Okay, so um, just be cautious about when you do that. Um, let's see. The, the wrapping it up. I think we showed one on, um, no, I don't think Carlton had it. Let me see. When we wrap up, see on this one, this is how, you know, we, pe people are like, well, what do you do with it afterward? Well, here, hi, everyone. Today is the last day this Facebook account will be updated. Same as we do on NCWeb. Same thing. But make sure that you have <coughs> somewhere to send them. Regarding any of the Upper Falls Fire, a little bit budget, Bridge Creek, any new starts in surrounding area, please see the Facebook account listed below. And I'm guessing they put a Facebook account... I guess the InstaWeb. Maybe that's or maybe that's a new post. I can't imagine they sent them to the team Facebook page, but maybe they did, which is odd. 
But normally you would, I would turn it back over to Kathy. I would say, if, depending on if another team's coming in behind you, the Facebook page would stay up. But if you're turning it back over to the forest, you talk to the forest person and say, I'm going to direct people back to your Facebook page. Or if they don't have a Facebook page, say, do you have an email or a, anything else that I can, you know, are you posting information? Are you going to keep posting information anywhere? If they're not, then you need to scale the whole thing down and just say, this is all the information will be posted. The fire is good to go. It's been put to bed. It's where nobody will be posting any more information and it's done. If you have questions, we give them the front desk phone number at the forest. So they can call there. You need to give them somewhere to go in case they have some follow-up question. But that's how you wrap it up, the same way that you do on NCWeb. Okay. Um, now, community pages. I want to show you. Community pages are, you get to a fire, and there's already four pages started about your fire. I think on the Wallow Fire, there were 12 Wallow Fire information pages, and none of them were started by the team. This was before we had an official fire information logo. But the deal is you can leverage these pages. The, it happened to us on, let's see if I have one up here, on this fire. Oop. This was the, uh, it was called the Funny River Fire down where I live in Kenai. So once we found this fire and we looked at all the things that they were, now they're using, this was years ago, so they're using it for other things. But um, they had all this information on the page. It was the, and it was called the Funny River Fire Help and Community Resource. It was already, already established. So we went in, and I, I messaged the admin, and I said, I'm, we're with the team that's coming to manage the fire. And it looks like you're doing a great job on your page, and you have a lot of community followers. I think that's great. How about if I send you our update every day so that you can post it on your page? And she said, she wrote me back, said, yes, that would be great. She wanted the right information. I said, so let me feed that to you and make sure you have it. And I said, and do me a favor. If you see anything on your page that looks like a rumor or you're not sure if it's true, would you let me know? So we just messaged back and forth. And she let me know. She watched her own page for me. And I was able to know what was going on. Her, If there was a problem, she said, you got to go look at this person's post. I'm not sure what to do. And I would give her advice about what to do about somebody who was posting bad information or whatever. And... And then I would have her answer it, not me, because they're hearing from their own community member and giving them <laughs> information, which as much as they want official information, we're the government. So if, the neighbor, if their neighbor is answering the question and saying, I just spoke with the incident management team and they assure me this is not happening or they assure me the fire has not crossed over this road. And any links I can send her. So you can leverage those pages, okay? You can use those pages to your benefit. And I, I recommend that you do. You can't shut them down. Again, freedom of information. They can start whatever they want. But I highly recommend that you leverage that information. I have a question from Facebook. If a user Come over violates... This way. Come this way. If a user violates Facebook terms of service, would you suggest we report it to Facebook? Sure. I think if you if they did do that, here's another. I talked to another attorney who said, he said, I would, I would keep people on track, the same as you would in a public meeting. Would you let someone come into your public meeting and stand there and scream at people and disrupt things? No, you would, LEOs or somebody would escort them out of the building, or you would ask them. You know, you wouldn't give them the microphone. You would, because there's a limit to how much you have to tolerate in order to be able to deal with the larger audience and what's really happening. So he said, use what you would tolerate at a public meeting as your guideline for what you would tolerate online. You don't have to tolerate anything differently online than you would tolerate there. But there are ways and techniques to dealing with people who are giving you trouble. And I highly recommend that you think about those. And we'll do a little bit later on lessons learned when things do go bad. But you think about, you need just, just like you need to have a plan for how you're going to post and protocols and all that, you need to have a plan for what you're going to do if something bad happens. What do you do if somebody starts posting? I've had it happen on a live stream and somebody starts just blowing up the page until no one else can get comments and we had to shut the whole thing down and s start a new one and try to, I mean, it was terrible. You, you got to have a plan. You need to think ahead about what are you going to do when someone gets on your page and starts being, you know, a troll and is just causing you a lot of trouble. And learn to differentiate between things that matter and things that don't. I don't like the Forest Service is not something that matters. I, there's nothing I do about it. It's your opinion. It's whatever. Oh, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to spend a lot of airtime fighting that particular opinion. I'm going to do my best to answer things that we can. And we'll, we'll talk a little about that um, a little bit later. 
Are there any other? You have? Yeah, just a couple of comments on that. Um, we've found over the years that uh, the public will kind of police themselves, and so sometimes we'll just monitor stuff. And uh, we did have a fire. Um, we'll talk about it. It's part of our scenario, but we had a, a fire last year where we had a large, very large Spanish-speaking community, and uh, everything we did was bilingual. And we got a lot of comments of telling people to go back to their own country if they don't speak English. Um, and the local residents took care of all of it. I mean, we didn't have to do anything, and and we just monitored and. And we found that most of the time people are will uh, correct others and, and keep them in line. So unless it has like major threats and horrible language, we kind of let let it play out. I, that's one thing I wanted to remind you is that the, the community will police itself. Sometimes you have to wait a little longer than you're comfortable with. Sometimes it takes two hours. And finally they jump in and they, you know, it takes longer than you would have thought, but you have to be very strategic about how you're going to reply. Sometimes replying to that person is not the wisest move. Sometimes if they're complaining about firefighters are just out there to make money and there's no real fire and they're making it bigger, which we hear all the time, it's better to make a post to the to, on Facebook in general that deals with instead of getting into it with one person. So there are things you can do to deal with those kinds of things on Facebook, but you need to be prepared for that. So... Okay, the question, do I recommend not monitoring, commenting, or anything during Facebook Live or Facebook? No. If you're going to open it, if you're going to build it, they will come. You better be there to answer questions. I'm saying don't monitor, meaning there's a, there's, it's, it's not the right word. There's a thing you can do on Facebook that lets you get the, com I'm losing the word, but that lets you get the comments first before they ever post. So if someone goes on to make a comment, it doesn't appear on the page until you approve it. It's a setting no, that you can change setting. that I'll makes you ha that makes every comment that's submitted has to come through for approval for before approval. it shows on the page. And you don't want to do that. So, but yes, if you're going to build it, you better have somebody there to monitor it, engage. Don't build it and think that you don't don't turn off the commenting. Some people turn off the commenting. I'm like, what is the point of this if not engagement? The point of this is to engage with people and to and to share information and to deal with their concerns and fears we're building a community here of people with like concerns and people like to share the fear with other people who are also afraid or concerned about things so we're building a community and a place for them to do that and yes you need to engage you need to answer you just have to be strategic about when you answer trolls you know you just have to be careful about when you engage directly with them yes If you had one, you could, sure. That's, but I wouldn't use the Voss to, I don't use the Voss, they make no public answers. They're not allowed to answer for us. We retain control over answering. But they can say, I read this from this guy, what can I say? I'll write the answer and they can post it in there for me. Because they're logged in as us on our, on, our, on our Gmail account or our Facebook page. They're, in, they're, they're posting as the, the incident. So it doesn't show that someone outside is answering. But I give them the answer and then they post it. So, yes, you can, yes. So, one more thing to add when it comes to comments, and I think this becomes a big, um, a big workload for us in, in a busy fire when we have social media. So, monitoring comments and, and what people say. But you've got to remember that the people that are commenting, for the most part, are local residents, and they're going through probably one of the worst times ever. They've lost things. They're, they're evacuated. They're, they've sucked smoke for weeks. You've got to give them a little leverage. I mean, give them a little uh, um, a chance to vent and to get some of that off their chest because they need to. I mean, it's they're they're upset. They're upset that the fire's not out, and you got to kind of let them vent and, and keep that in mind when you're monitoring some of this stuff and give people a chance. And and uh, venting is not a bad thing. It helps them out, and you can be there for them and understand some of their concerns and and use it to help address things at public meetings, um, but understand that they're going through some tough times when they're on there and, and kind of venting. Yeah, There's a difference between just venting because you've, you've been evacuated for two weeks or somebody just being a troll. There's a huge difference. Yeah. So it, it, it's, you know, well, we'll go over, we're going to talk about it during the lessons learned. We'll go a little more detail into how you, how you deal with some of those people. So we're done with this portion of this. Um, we're, um, we're going to go to lunch and be back at 
one fifteen Eastern time, and then we're going to practice. No, one fifteen Eastern. <laughs> we'll we'll be back. I'm sorry. You're right. In the room here, you will be back at one fifteen, and we're going to practice. For people online, two fifteen is when we'll be back on to do something on live streaming. So at 2.15, we'll be back on live. What we want you to do during the practice session, and here you're going to do the same thing. You are going to build a new community page. You can each build one. You can work in a group of two. I don't care how you do it. But you're going to build a community page. We'll show you how to take them down afterward. I'd like the name to include something that says practice or test, just in case. Don't friend anyone. <laughs> We don't want anyone following your page. We don't want to see it, and we'll take it down after it's done. We want you to go in the student folder, look for some practice material. There's fire pictures. There's updates, all kinds of things. Not the final scenario folder, the one that says practice materials. Um, add someone as an admin. Change the header. Add the, the official fire information logo. Use any items that are in the folder to make links. Use tiny URL. Put them with your maps. There are maps in there and pictures. Post pictures or videos. Try to always be educational. Try to always put your link. So we're going to take an hour and practice after lunch. Okay? All right. We'll see the people online back at 2.15 Eastern time. <laughs>